Hey friend, welcome to the Intentional Mind Podcast. I'm your host, Ange Barnard, and on this episode, we're talking about what's it like to have a home birth experience. So if you've been curious about that, this may be a good episode to listen to, or if you are just curious about my home birth experience because you've been listening to the show for a while, or you know me, and you're just curious how it all went down, how I gave birth to my son in my home, you're gonna hear that story today. On this episode, I'm gonna share with you why I chose to have a home birth experience, what happened that day, um, as well as some fears that I had prior to giving birth to my son and how I addressed those fears and how I used my process of clarifying your vision to create a very positive home birth experience. And I'm sure I'm gonna drop some wisdom bombs for you that are relevant for whatever you have going on in your life. Because I know for sure that you wanna be intentional about how you show up. And this process for me of having a home birth experience was super intentional. And I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned here for whatever phase you are in in your life. And you might hear with this new mic that I have, picks up a lot of noise. Uh, So you may hear my son right now because he is breastfeeding and he's breathing and, you know, pulling at the boob. So you might hear that happening right now as I record. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so I have so many notes in my phone and there's so many things I can tell you about what I've learned through this journey of having a home birth, of you know, be having a very intentional pregnancy, all the things. There's so many things I could tell you, but I got to stay on track. And the question that I have written in my phone is, what, why did you choose to have a home birth over a traditional hospital setting? So a lot of consideration went into this. And in a nutshell, why I chose to have a home birth experience was because I really wanted personalized care. And I felt like in this my experiences that I was having, I, with the care that I was receiving in our normal healthcare setting, didn't feel very personalized to me. I know that that's not the case for everyone across the board, but for me, that's what my experience was seeming to be like. And I was like, I don't want that for my whole pregnancy and my birth. I really want to be considered as an individual. I really want to try to do as many natural things as I can do. Um, So that's why I got curious about home birth. I had, I knew nothing about home birth before diving into the research, just like anything we do. You don't know anything about it. It's like curiosity leads you down that path. But the reason I got curious about it started with a seed that was planted by one of my friends, shout out to Sarah, who is a doula in Greenville, South Carolina. And, uh, She told me about doulas and what they do because I knew nothing about that either. And I just thought after talking to her, I was like, well, I definitely want to have a doula when I get when I get pregnant. And so my once I found out I was pregnant, my first step was finding a doula. And then I started asking questions about home birth because I knew that there was that connection between doulas and home birth. And you can get a doula, you know, for a traditional hospital kind of birth as well. But I knew that that there was that connection. So as soon as I found out I was pregnant, before even going to get, you know, get checked out in a healthcare setting, I had a positive pregnancy test. Right away, my first step was, where can I find a doula? And I ended up finding a doula that is about 50 minutes from me because I live in the middle of nowhere, Indiana. So that was another concern that I had. I thought like, are am I going to be able to find these people? You know, but I just started following my curiosity and just took one step at a time. So I found a doula and I was so excited. Shout out to my doula, Heidi, because she is a photographer and a videographer. And I really value video. I have a broadcast journalism background. So I just have a love for video and storytelling and I thought, oh, so cool. My doula also has that skill set with photography and videography. So I was so excited about that. And once I ended up meeting with my doula, I was like, um, so can I have a home birth? Because I didn't even know that would be an option here in Indiana. And I didn't even know who would deliver the baby if I had a home birth. Like, I didn't know anything. I was very ignorant to the whole process. And she was 
so great at educating me about it and being like, yeah, it's a, you get a midwife, they come to your house, you know, you can do all your care with a midwife. And she connected me with multiple options. And I found out that I was pregnant when I think I was like six weeks pregnant. So pretty early on. And I acted very quickly and on, you know, getting my stuff set up. So I started calling and it was crazy because I think I contacted probably nine before I ended up finding my midwife. And um, they were, most of them were completely booked out for the date that I potentially could have a baby. So I was like, wow, this is actually pretty common around here. And I wanted to make sure I felt really good about the midwife that I chose, you know, energy wise, you know how I am. And I ended up finding my midwife, Rhoda, and it was amazing. And I know that that was like meant to be. So anyways, that's how the journey got started. But it got started due to this desire to want to have a very personalized experience and just me following my curiosity. And there were so many things that I didn't know until I started taking courses on birth stuff, learning more about the whole home birth experience, pain, um, managing the pain in the set. Like, oh my gosh, you know, you know how I am. If you listen to the show, I research things galore. So I I feel like the past 10 months of being pregnant because I went, I was almost 41 weeks pregnant when I delivered my son. I was like a day short of that. That entire time I was educating myself on all the things. And I've watched well over 100 birth videos of people, you know, women giving birth in a home setting. And I've taken courses, you know, I'm nerd like that. So I did all the research, but that's the reason why I chose a home birth is because I really felt like it would be, I wanted to, to, let me just go on my notes because I got to stay on track over here. I chose it, personalized care, number one, control of the environment and energy in the space, number two. That was the reason why. Because in a traditional um, hospital setting, I knew, I I know this is not true for everyone because you can, you know, there's some things that you can decide on who's going to be there with like your medical team and stuff. But you know, there's so many people that have given birth and another doctor shows up that they had never met before because of the time that they gave birth and there's random nurses in there and they don't know, you know, it's like, I really wanted to know who was going to be there at my birth and I wanted to know what their energy was like. Because what I didn't want was to be in a setting where someone comes in and they're just having a bad day and they bring that catabolic energy into a space that is so special to me, you know, giving birth to my first son. It's like, I didn't want that affected by, if I could control the energy in the environment as much as I could, I wanted to. So that was another reason why I wanted to know who was there, what their energy was like, um, have more control over the, the environment and be able to set up things that felt very comfortable to me. Like, you know, the scents that I wanted to have with my infuser, the music, the lighting, just like I really wanted my son to be born into a positive energetic space because that was his first impression of the world. And I wanted it to be like him to see the world in a very positive way. I wanted to be really intentional about that. So I felt like I could control that more in my own home birth or in my own home experience environment. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. So those are my main reasons why. And then things I was afraid of initially were what if there's an issue? And that's something always people, people often say, like, as soon as I would say, like, I I was going to have home birth, like, what do you do if there's an issue though? You know, because all these people have these issues, you know, when they're giving birth. And it's, that's where a lot of our minds go. And that's true. Like people do have issues, you know, giving birth. Um, But more so people have positive birth experiences. You know, actually, statistically, things go right more than they go wrong. So anyways, um, but that was a fear of mine. It's like, well, what if I did have an issue? So for me, I am located very close to the hospital. I think it's like less than two miles from my house. So I thought, okay, I can be transferred. And I asked a lot of questions around the that process. And my midwife had a complications class that we took that was like two and a half hours long, um, was always like educating us on, you know, if there were complications, she is a true professional, um, you know, delivered, I think, well over 2,000 babies at this point. I don't know, a lot of babies. 
and very experienced in, in the field. So I felt like those were, knowing those things helped me with that fear, overcome that fear. Because I was like, well, there's a protocol. There's options in place. Um, my midwife knows what she's doing. She's done this a lot. So that stuff was really helpful in addressing that fear of if there was an issue. Okay, so other things, uh, so that's what I would recommend if, if anyone has that fear is hire an experienced team, ask the questions that you're concerned about so you can get those fears addressed. You can shine a light on those monsters, as I would say. That's how we talk about it in the Clarify Your Vision course. Um, you can take a complications class like I did. You can do what's in your power to have a healthier, easier labor. There's things that you can do in it, you know, in advance that are known to help you with that. Of course, you know, things happen, but do what you can. Be intentional about the things that you can. All right. Another fear of mine was how I was going to handle the pain. Because in a home birth setting, there's no epidural, you know, there is you and your body and your, your breath and your faith and all that coming in and other techniques. But what's really cool about having a doula is a doula helps a lot with those pain management techniques. And things that were really helpful to me was, first off, I did a lot of research in advance on handling the pain. So I felt like I was educated. I knew how to, to breathe. Um, I knew certain things to expect. And then after watching like 100 home births, I saw common things that happen, you know, with pain. So I was like, oh, that's what it's like. It wasn't it wasn't a shocker to me when it showed up in a certain way because my brain already saw it. It was already familiar to my brain. So that helped reduce the fear around it too, which helped reduce the cortisol around it because hormones play a huge role in your experience of, you know, delivering a baby. So I was considering all these things. Some of the things that were really helpful to me around handling the pain was definitely water, water on my back, um, a comb. I use a grip to comb throughout because that pressure is like your, your brain is paying attention to the pressure of the comb versus like the pressure of labor, the pain of that. So it's just, it's just really helpful in that way. And then my doula Heidi helped me with a ton of things, different you know, moving around. She would be watching if I was cleansing in my in my jaw or my face and help me relax, saying encouraging things. And of course, my husband, you know, the way that he showed up through it, that plays a huge role. His energy. You know, energy is contagious. We talk about this in the show so much. And it's so important to consider when you are giving birth, like the energy of those around you. Um, the energy of like what's going on when your baby comes into the world. And if you can... And, be intentional about that. Be intentional about it. You know, right? Okay. Anyways, I digress. Uh, let's see. So those were the things that helped me with handling the pain, the researching, um, making my mind familiar of what to expect, um, different things that help with it, that, you know, talking to my doula, all that good stuff. Uh, another fear that I had was what if they don't get there on time? That was something people asked me a lot. Like, well, your your doula is almost an hour away. Your midwife's an hour and a half away. What if they don't get there on time? And so I thought about that. And I was like, well, first off, if you look at the research, uh, first time moms usually don't give birth very quickly. Of course, there are people that have, of course. But statistically, the majority don't give birth very quickly. So it's a process that builds up 12 to 24 hours, something like that for first time moms. I looked at the stats, but who knows what they are. It's a long time. Usually it takes. And then the second time, third time or whatever, multiple kids, it's faster. So statistically, I thought I thought about that. I was like, well, the stats are in my favor as far as it takes a while. I'm in communication with my midwife. She's very experienced in this. So she knows based on symptoms and things I'm telling her how long, you know, or when she should show up, those kinds of things. So you're just in constant communication. And so what if she didn't make it on time? And for some reason, out of the ordinary, I had a, an extremely quick delivery. Then what? Then my husband would be here. And my husband's a doctor. Just kidding. <laughs> he is, though. He, of, of the mouth. But he's a dentist. But the, I just laugh at that because my mom was, when I said this to my mom, she's like, but your husband's a doctor. I'm like, mom, 
he always he was like on the opposite end you know on the mouth not on the other end but anyways i felt like well my husband would be here there's so many scenarios where people give birth at their home unassisted and you know i knew the midwife would then be showing up so i was like okay if that's how it is then so be it so i was i had to talk myself through addressing these fears and that's with anything i do in my life, if I'm gonna step out and do something new, there's fear that shows up. And I'm like, okay, let me research this. Let me see my options. Let me address that fear. Let me shine a light on those monsters because this is not gonna hold me back because that will always show up with anything new that you are doing. Okay, and you know, for me, it's like, I wanna live my life based on my faith, not my fear. I want my faith and my love and abundance and those higher energy things to lead my decision-making, not my fear. My fear can be in the car with me, but it's not going to take the steering wheel. All right. And another concern that I had was if I did a water birth, would my son drown in it? And I, 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 duh, like he's in your belly and, or your boy, girl, whatever it is, is in your belly and it's like surrounded by water. It's used to that. It's connected to your umbilical cord. It knows not to breathe when it's immersed in water until it experiences the air. But I had some fear around that. So I had to do some research on that. Like, okay, that's that's how it is. All right. And uh, I ended up opting out of giving having a water birth because I didn't order one of the, the pools. I have a huge bathtub, but I knew that I could use that to soothe in the water. And I did, but I didn't use it for birth because it's not deep. Um, It's deep, but my midwife said she wanted it to be even deeper. I think it was like 24 inches or something like that. And it was shorter. I think it was like 20 or 18. I don't remember. But it was shorter than that. And that would reduce the risk of, you know, if you got exposed to air, taking a breath sooner and just reduce the risk. I've seen people that done it in way shallower, but I didn't want to take that, that risk. And I just wanted to use the water to soothe. So I did. And then I got out of it. By the time it was like my labor was really progressing. Um, but I think it's a beautiful thing if you can do that. It's very soothing. And I hear really great things from other people. But that was a fear that I had before. I don't have that fear anymore now. I think maybe my next child, I'll really consider doing it in that way. Um, because now I know more about the fact that he's not going to drown in there um, if you do things correctly. And how the fact that he's in water. But these are things I didn't know. And I'm just keeping it real with like things I didn't know. The other thing I didn't know is, or I had concerns about was like, well, where would I deliver him? Where, like, and people had asked me that too, like on the ground, on the bathroom floor or where, you know? And I'm like, I, after doing research and after watching well over a hundred home births, I realized that the majority of them are not done on a bed from the videos that I saw. I saw they're not done in that way. And it has to do with, like, ideally, your position for birth, the less ideal position is going to be on your back where gravity is working against you and it's causing, you know, your hips aren't going to open up as much. Um, So it's better to use gravity to your advantage. Now, there's some cases where I actually did end up delivering on my back on the floor, um, but I think that had to do with my baby's positioning and where it was at. Uh, But anyways, from all the videos I saw, that was not a common thing. There was people delivering right over the toilet, a lot in the shower, in a tub, in a birthing pool, um, on the ground in the bathroom, on other ground areas, um, things like that. On all fours, it was just all different kinds of positions. So, okay, that was, so that was the concern I had. And then I learned that it can happen wherever it happens as you're going through the process. And I like that. I like the fact that I that I knew that I had a lot of options and I could just let my body do its thing and then work with it. Whereas I know watching my sisters give birth in the hospital setting, I remember not seeing them offered options. And I know that's not the same across multiple hospitals. And I know birthing centers are very different too in how they do things. But I just, from my experience of what I've seen, I didn't, re- I remember the option being on their back. Like no one offered them a lot, a lot of other soothing things and things like that. So anyhow, moving on. Okay. So those were most of my fears that I had addressed prior to. The other thing I wish I would have done sooner is to clarify my vision sooner around it. 
I had a fuzzy vision of a, having a home birth experience. And of course, there were certain qualities I wanted to have as part of my birthing experience. But I didn't really clarify that vision early on. And I would say I didn't because, you know, even though I teach this stuff, there's always a part of me that is sometimes afraid to put my vision out there because I don't want to be disappointed that it didn't come to be, you know? And that's where my game that I often suggest people play, the wouldn't it be cool if game, is so helpful because then you're unattached. It's just like, wouldn't this be cool? I'd be cool if this could happen. And you're just in that dreamy state because I feel like when I put a lot of pressure on myself around it has to be this way, the energy shifts into the catabolic range. And I don't like that. So I was thinking about this because at towards the end of my pregnancy, I reached, so I had Zion at um, a day short of 41 weeks. And it was, he, he was a big boy. He was eight pounds and 10 ounces. To me, that felt like a big boy. And uh, he was really like my ribs just hurt and that last week or couple weeks it was it was uncomfortable very uncomfortable and even just going out to eat I couldn't even sit in like a booth for a very long time just at dinner with family because it was like shoving up my ribs and I was struggling breathing and sleeping and my my feet were so fat you know yeah so at that point in time I was like let's clarify this vision so I wrote down wouldn't it be cool if and I started just filling in the blanks. I was like, wouldn't it be cool if Zion could be born on a weekend? That way my husband could have some time with me before going back to work because he didn't take any time off. In his field, it can be challenging, especially being the only doctor in the office. Um, it's hard. We didn't know when our son was coming. So we didn't want to like block off a big chunk of time without knowing when he was coming um, and all the things. So Anyways, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if it was a weekend? That way I didn't have to risk pulling him out of a surgery if a patient was under, you know, anesthesia or something like that. So that was one thing I wrote down. And then I wrote down, wouldn't it be cool if he was born at, or he, my labor started around 10 a.m. And I, I just picked that time because I thought, I really don't want to have to call people to come in the middle of the night and you know, it's my, that server energy in me kicking in where I was like, I don't want to bother you, like in the middle of the night, wake you up, all that. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if it was like in the morning where everyone was already up, my birth team, and I could be in that constant communication. So I wrote down that time. And then I wrote down, would it be cool if he was born with a full head of hair and I was like dark hair and little, little chubs, little rolls, because I think it would be just cute and what else did I write down? That I just wanted it to feel like a very like loving Zen space. And uh, anyways, we, so my labor started at 9.37 a.m. is when my water broke. I think I started labor actually earlier because I woke up that morning and I was like, I think today is the day. In fact, the night before we went out to eat, it was so fun. We went out to eat at this restaurant we've never been to and and I didn't even really want to go out to eat, but I thought about it. I was like, you know, this could be like the last time it's just me and my hubs. So like, let's go find a new place. And we went, because it was already late when we went out. I think we got home at like 10 after we ended up eating. But we went to this place. We had a really awesome server. And it was really cool because she ended up giving us a free uh, dessert. It was a birthday dessert is what she called it so that she could make it free for us. And we're like, well, it could be, we could, it could be a manifestation thing. Like it could be my son's birthday here soon. So it's for him. So we like laughed about that. And I was like, maybe this is, will be the thing energetically that sets it off. And she's like, if it is, you gotta let me know. So it was cool. Cause we got like this really yummy, like peanut butter pie. It wasn't, it was more like a peanut butter cake, but it was delicious. So we brought that home that night and we ate it on our balcony as we like listen to all of the sounds of nature because I live in such a like zen space on the lake and we were eating it on our balcony and I was like let's go for a walk so we went for a walk and I was feeling like pressure and I was like I think I even might even be having contractions who knows you know but something feels off because my husband's like you think it's going to be close and I was like I think it's going to be soon and then that next morning I felt like nauseous and stuff but then my labor didn't or my water broke at 9 37 a.m also side note I had no idea that before labor really kicks in, like 
I had no idea that only 10% of women, according to the stats, uh, waters actually break. I did not know that. Because I know a lot of people whose waters have broken before they had their baby. Anyways, mine did break. And uh, then it was intense after that. Very quickly intense. Like, so I went upstairs. I ended up waking my husband up because he was still sleeping. I wanted him to get as much sleep as possible. Uh, because I thought that day might be, you know, a long day. And I went up there and I, and I told him, hey, I, my, I think my water broke. Because I was confused. Like, did you just pee your pants or did your water break? Who knows? Uh, yeah, it was definitely my water was br- broke. And um, then, like, sh- like within 15, 20 minutes, it was like, whoa. I was, like, focusing on my breath. And we ended up asking our doula to come out. And then we were in communication with our midwife. And we were checking to see how far apart the contractions were. And it was pretty quick that I was very close to, like, active labor. So she was going to be making her way over. And by the time my doula came over, I was already focusing on my breath um, and then by the time my midwife came over, I was like really into it, like closing. I had to like barely open my eyes to like see her, you know, I was totally in labor land as she calls it, calls it like my eyes were closed the majority of the time. So, so it was around, I would say about 10 AM. Like, so it was crazy how it all went down. It was a Saturday. It was like 10 AM where it was like right around 10 AM where the water had broken and all the things began. So from there, I was moving through a lot of different spaces in my my home. I had moved from um, my son's room to the, the shower, to the tub, to the toilet, back to my son's room, back to like on the ground. And where I actually delivered him was on the ground um, of his nursery room. But it was like I was constantly changing positions. My husband was there, right there, like holding me the entire time, putting water on my back, telling me sweet things, kissing me, like telling me I I can do this. I was doing so good. He's so proud of me, you know, like those kinds of things. Um, But I really was in the zone. And a couple of times I would open up my eyes and I would look down at my watch, my hiking watch, and I would just to see the time and I'd be like, whoa, like that much time has passed. Like I've been in it. It's like, who am I? Because... The normal me struggles meditating for five minutes, and it was like nine hours of that, like just focusing on my breath. And I did really good focusing on my breath, almost too good, because I got to the point where I started getting really tired, and when I was, my body was, because your body like forces you to push. If you have had a baby, you know what I'm talking about. really feels like you just have to poop, like you just got to push, and like you, it's like relieving to push in a sense. So anyways, but it's also very painful. Um, I was getting really tired and I had not eaten anything, you know, all day. So it was like, you're like running a marathon or multiple marathons. And it's like, my blood sugar was probably dropping. Who knows what was going on? And my midwife's like, I think she's really tired. So like they gave me honey and I was drinking like electrolyte water. And then um, they're like, let's just, just rest, you know, go on your side and rest for a little bit. But I couldn't rest because I was feeling the urge to push but after the honey, it helped. It was almost like running a marathon. You get one of your gel packs and it's like, or you're running a long race and it's like, whoa, like that burst of energy comes in. So that was super helpful. Thank you. Thank you to the bees because I needed that. And then uh, I started just like really pushing. And what I was saying is like, I was doing so good with my breath that my midwife is like, usually it's like, you know, you push and it's like, you feel the urge to push again, like right away back to back. But mine were kind of spread apart, but I don't know if they were necessarily spread apart. I think what was happening is I would push and then I would breathe through the next one. Like I'd almost like resist the the urge to push because I would use my breath to like manage the pain of it. I feel like I was doing really good using the breath, but then it was kind of going against. So she was like, I think you're using your breath in the other way. I forget how she worded it. It was like push because push all the way through because what was happening is he would come up a little bit and then it would like, he would come down his head. And then finally, um, I just kept really doing the pushes and they were like holding my feet and I was just really trying to push all the way through and back to back. And uh, he came out and they saw his head and I heard, I thought it was my cat, Steve, because I heard these noises like, 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 I don't know, it was like, a, like cat noises, it sounded like. It wasn't like a baby cry. And they were laughing, like the rest of the birth team was laughing because his head was all the way out and he was looking around like wide eyed, looking around like a little gopher, like just a gopher head that had popped out. 
and just looking around and they're like there he is you know my I could hear my husband like get choked up and like start to cry and I was like oh I kind of felt like relieved they're like you gotta push him out because like I had to push the rest of like just his head was there so then I was like push push you know like got him out and then I thought and then they like pull him up and my husband's crying you know and then they like lay him um on my chest and I thought that I would be the person, because I've watched these home birth videos, that would be like sobbing because you're so joy-filled. But I was not at that point yet because I was so tired that I was just like, oh, you know, like, and then he was there. And then once I like, like looked at him and stuff, I was like, oh, the little child girls and the huge freaking hands and feet. Like he has big hands and feet. And I feel like he actually looks a lot like me in the face. He has like these squinty eyes and these big lips. But then as I've been taking pictures of him when he's nursing or just laying there, he's starting to look more like my husband, I feel like, because I've looked at some pictures of my husband when he was little and I was like, okay, now I can start to see that resemblance. It's so fun though to think about watching his looks develop, his personality develop. I'm still looking forward to that. Okay, so back to the birth. I forgot to tell you that as soon as he came out, uh, my midwife said that she was seeing more blood than she'd like to see. So instead of waiting for my, my, me to deliver my placenta on my own, she wanted to help with getting the uterus to do what it needs to do, you know, after the placenta is pulled out. First off, let me backtrack about this placenta thing. I had no, I didn't know what a placenta was before this. Truly, I'm keeping it real. Like, I didn't really know what it looked like, anything really about it. Like, I knew that it was related to making a baby, but I didn't know much more than that. But wow, it's such a beautiful organ. Like, it looks like a tree of life. It's just so cool. And I just shared a picture of it on my Instagram at Ange Barnard. If you're curious what my placenta looked like, you can go there and see my placenta. Uh, and I got to tell you more about the placenta in just a bit. But anyways, so she wanted was like, I'm going to go in and pull the placenta out. So I remember in our complications class, that was the thing. Like if you're bleeding too much, you know, and you're not delivering the placenta on your own right away. But in this case, maybe I would have, but it was like she didn't want to wait because I was already losing th that blood. So she, I was like, okay, okay. And she like reached up in there and just started pulling it out and it came out all the way. And um, then my husband said something about being proud. He's like, I don't think you're going to need stitches or anything. And she was like, yeah, I think you do need stitches though. And she's like, oh, really? And, and she's like, yeah, it's not bad, but she's, I would definitely just do them. Um, so after the bath and stuff, you know, before I leave, after we check on the baby and all that stuff, then we'll do the stitching. So that ended up happening. I had two stitches. Um, but okay. So after I am, had that time on the floor of my baby, then my midwife really wanted me to eat. So she wanted us to figure out that food situation. So my husband was figuring that out. And then, uh, they helped me go to the bathtub as they had prepared the bath tub for me with the sits bath with like these herbs and stuff that are healing and helpful and she's like you can bring the baby in there and just like sit in there so they put this plastic all on the ground to on the path to the bathroom because that was me bleeding on the way there and it was rough like getting up you're like oh and there's blood everywhere and they're like holding you and helping you and there's just so loving it's so such a blessing to have a team like that because we had my doula, my midwife, and then two additional support people. So like the assistant and maybe the other assistant. Um, I forget their midwife, other kinds of types of midwives, I would say, that were there. So that was really helpful. And they were just so loving and supportive the entire time. Like like I said, helping carry me, cleaning up everything, all because there's a lot of supplies and things all over the place and just, just really loving on us and taking care of us. So I went in the bathtub with my baby and I just sat in it with him holding him for a bit and my husband was taking food orders from our favorite restaurant in town and I decided what I wanted to have was a buffalo chicken salad because it was a really good one in town and they chop it up into like very tiny like the the veggies into very tiny pieces and it's just really yummy so I was like oh I want that and then get some pizza too so he did <laughs> and then everybody else ordered the things that they wanted off the menu and then he went off and then he Right before he left, he sent a text to our family and told them and some pictures because we didn't tell anyone throughout the process. While I was in giving birth, I didn't really want to tell anyone because I know people have like a birthing 
or not a birthing, a prayer team. And I think that's really awesome too, like people praying over you and thinking of you. But I just didn't want anyone to get worried or have any anxious energy around it if we told them earlier in the day and they're like, is everything okay? You know, I didn't want their energy affecting my process in that way. So I was like, we're going to let you know as soon as we have him. And we did. Well, as soon as we, wasn't like right away, but it was like, you know, once we got to a point where we were able to start messaging people. And so I stayed in the bath and then my um, team came over and they helped me get out of the bathtub. And it was so cool because they even brought me like towels from the dryer that were warm. So I had like warm towels around me and then... Uh, then they were measuring the baby and making sure everything was good because we waited to like get his weight and all that stuff. Oh, I forgot to tell you about like the cord. My husband ended up uh, cutting the, he ended up catching the baby, cutting the baby's cord. Um, When my baby came out, he had like his, they had to move his umbilical cords like out of the way. It was almost like they said, it was like little shoulder straps that he had going on. We were like, oh, he came out a hiker, like his dad, you know, and we were laughing about that. Like, like he already had his hiking bag on his back kind of thing. Um, what other details am I forgetting? I have a home birth video coming out and I, I, I want to share that thing because I'm telling you, I'm going to put it on YouTube even because it was such a gift to me to see other people's home birth experiences. And you know how it is. If you want to have something happen in your life, you want your brain to see evidence that that is possible for you. You need to make the unfamiliar familiar. We had an awesome podcast episode on that about the four things that you need to know about your mind. I forget I forget what it was titled, but I'm going to link it into the show notes. You might want to go back and listen to that because the big part of it was making the unfamiliar familiar. And the way that you do that is by looking at, you know, what other people are doing, seeing examples of the things that you want, making it familiar in your mind. So important. That's some of the work that we do in Commit to Your Vision. And really fun, fun that, that program, that's a secondary program um, after my Clarify Your Vision program. And I am redoing all of those things right now. I'm in the process of completing Clarify Your Vision, so I'm so excited about that. I feel so excited about the next round of the Commit to Your Vision program because of the additional things I've learned and I'm implementing. Because it's not enough to have a vision. You gotta train yourself to be the person to bring that into reality. And what you're hearing in this story right now is how I trained myself. Like I made my mind familiar with what it was like to have a positive home birth experience. I was really intentional about the actions I took. I acted like the kind of person who would have a positive home birth experience. I did the things that that kind of person would do in my daily habits. There was so much more to it than you're hearing on on this show um, right now, but that'd have to be like a whole nother episode. But anyways, what was my point? What I want to pick it back up around what happened. So then they, they weighed the baby and stuff. And then I got on the bed and did my stitches. Um, and it was a cool experience because they put the plastic down on the bed. And then they had me come on the bed and uh, brought Rhoda, my midwife, brought a cookie sheet. So I had to like lift my butt up. And then that way it was like really flat surface. And then she just numbed me and then did the stitches right there. And then she made sure that everything was good with me, that I had ate, that I had peed and did all the, the baby was good before she left us. So she didn't end up leaving us till pretty late at night. I think it was almost 10 or something like that by the time our team left. Um, and they probably arrived sometime earlier in the afternoon. Uh, but yeah, so that was my, my experience and it was awesome. And then that night, Ian and I, after everybody left, we're like, oh, what do we do now? <laughs> Where, how does he sleep? Like, what are, what are we doing? Because, you know, it's like, it's all a new experience. And I'm learning along the way. And I'm really excited that we made it through this podcast. He's sleeping right now, right by my boob. So I'm like, I can do this. This just brought me confidence. I'm like, I can do this with him. Okay, let me look back at my notes because I want to make sure I went over everything. Oh, I wanted to tell you another thing that happened that I thought was really interesting. You know, during my experience of being in intense labor for hours, I was really focused on my breath, you know, and I also had like this out of body experience. Like it was like I was the observer watching me go through this experience and surrounding me were my angels and my ancestors. I know that might sound weird to some people, but I was like, it was like I was supported by that kind of energy because I think this whole birthing experience, it's so, it's like you are like as a woman who's giving birth, it's like you're a portal, I feel like between heaven, you know, and it's like 
it would make sense like the angels and your ancestors coming around and surrounding you and it's like being a part of this experience too it it was that's how I felt around it it was so bizarre to me like I was like whoa and there was times where I was like praying and I was just like just I felt like I was just so surrounded by light and love and I had a birthing playlist too playing the whole time and I it was funny because I they even got me to like smile while I was in intense labor because they're like this is a really good birthing playlist like 10 out of 10 you know really good and um he was like yeah and she picked all the songs by herself and stuff so it was just nice because it was like songs from you know our our wedding song and just um a lot of christian related songs and just songs that made me feel really good that was playing on repeat while i was in intense labor Okay, so that was something I want to tell you. So in a nutshell, let me wrap this up with the lessons that I learned throughout this process. And this is it, that you can apply to your life too. For anything that you desire in your life, it's important that you craft a vision. And don't be attached to it. That's why the wouldn't it be cool if, fill in the blank, fill in the blank. Um, because I really believe that you, you're you called to make your desires known. And sometimes people are like, oh, is it all about just you getting what you want? You know, like people can have like this negative side of it. Well, the word desire actually means of the father. And if you look at the scripture around this, it's like, you know, you're making your desires known. God has given you desires for a reason. So that's the way that I see it. It's like, that already comes from God. It's like, but I'm having a conversation with God, making my desires known. And there's a lot of stories, even in the Bible, that talk about, like, God asking people what it is they want, wanting them to tell him. And it's like, he already knows, but he wants to have that conversation around it. So I think that's important. And then also remembering that anything is possible. You know, there was a part of me that was like, oh, do I really want to be that specific and say, at on the weekend, at this exact time, yada, yada. But it's like, I got to remember that that's the kind of God we serve. It's like, he can be that specific about things. He can make anything happen. And in a sense, me asking for it, whether it happens or not, is um, evidence of my faith and my belief in what could be possible. It's like you. many of you have heard the story around how my husband got this role that we're in and how he wanted that connection back to Beaufort, South Carolina that we used to have and how it was so crazy that the person who owned this practice also owned a practice in the same county we used to live in and was all about that you know, the potential of my husband being able to fly out and do some things for them at that practice at different times, just for our connection to be for it to still remain there. It's like, that's so crazy to even ask for that originally, like these two different sides of the U.S. that you'd have that connection. Like there's so many other stories that we have that are, are nuts. So um, if you're not, if you haven't heard that story, you might be like, well, what are you talking about? I'm just telling you, it was something that is like so out of the ordinary to happen but we asked for that. We played the game, wouldn't it be cool if? And it's like so crazy how things happen in our lives that you just would never expect. All right. So make your vision, but don't be attached to it. You know, it's just like you're putting out there, you know, wouldn't it be cool? Let's be fun. And you just stay in that energy of non-attachment. Address your fear, the monsters, as you start to envision what it is you want. Call them out. Shine a light on them. Um, Get your brain familiar with with what's going on with that fear of like, so for me, it's like, I have this kind of fear around, you know, water birth. Well, get my brain to know more about water birth, what that looks like, um, what the options are. I have a fear around handling the pain. Well, get my brain to be more familiar with what kind of pain might I experience. How might I, I handle that? And it's like, you're kind of solving and addressing those kinds of fears. So shining a light on the monster, we talk about this a lot in the Clarify Your Vision course because that can stop people from actually moving forward to begin with, even in clarifying a vision, is all the monsters that are there, that they're not shining lights on. And don't accept others' truth as true for you. Like so many people would be quick to tell me things that they heard and what could go wrong or whatever. And it's like, oh, well, my per friend tried that and it didn't work out for them, you know, so don't be attached to it working out, you know, for you and just like certain things that they would say. And it's like, I have always been the person that's like, I want to train my brain to believe in a certain way. And I'm not going to accept other people's things that are that they believe are true, true for me, unless I've done my own research around it. Okay. And then, so those are the things that I've learned throughout this process and that you're just so dang powerful and it's not all up to you to make whatever vision you want to, to become reality a reality. 
Like, this came to be, and it wasn't all up to me. It's like I told you, like, I had my angels around me, all the things. Like, I felt like I was so supported by God, and, and like, all these right people came into my life. A lot of pieces had to come together for me to have this kind of experience. But it started with me following my curiosity. It started with me taking one step at a time. And that's my might be the thing that you need to hear right now is that you follow that curiosity. You're already curious about something that you want, that you want to bring into reality. Take one step at a time and trust that you will be supported through it. Act like a person of faith. Make your decisions from a faith, abundant, loving space, not a fear-based place. And if you have fear around it, then do the research, do the things to try to shift that to the other state. Okay. If you like this episode, let me know. Go ahead and check out my Instagram at Ange Barnard because I'm gonna be posting some birth photos of the experience at home. And I'm not gonna do all the full out graphic ones. I was going to, but my husband was like, no, you don't need to be doing that, like showing all that. I'm like, at this point, I don't really care. But I'm still gonna show you the beauty of what went down because my photographer or my doula was oh, so amazing at capturing it. And then I'll, you'll see the birth video once that comes out as well, if you're interested in checking that out to get the full view of how it all went down. All right. If you've been enjoying the show and you haven't left us a review on Apple podcast or the, click the stars on Spotify, please do so. And I will talk to you soon. Hope you have an awesome day. All right. Bye.